when life throws us curveballs and things that we don't expect, how we handle them, how we process those events, very much shapes our future. What do you do when life throws you a curveball in the form of a ghost or a spirit or something unexplained? When dealt those cards, it can be very confusing as to what one should do. Like when a father passes away, who in life maybe wasn't so great, but on the other side seems to find redemption and is able to come back to his family. How does that family handle that? And then when one moves into a home and discovers there's something very dark, possibly demonic in there, going after one's child, what do you do to protect your child? And what happens when you discover there's a curse that was put on you when you were just an infant, but it's been tormenting you your whole life? Lots of decisions to be made in our stories today. This is EPP bonus episode number 382 of Real Ghost Stories Online. My name is Tony Bruski. Stay with us. on is it too late to find forgiveness or redemption for the actions that we've taken in our life is that the door closed sorry you should have already taken care of that marker in our next story we hear about a father who as the writer says was better than bad but certainly did his fair share of things in life that caused some resentment in a family. But on the other side, seems to have seen the light come back and let his family know, I'm sorry, I love you, and I'm still here. It gives a little bit of hope for those who may have passed on suddenly or without resolution to those in life. Hopefully, there's someone out there who hears the story connects and it makes a difference. Take a listen. From a very young age, I've been able to see and feel things that no one else could see or hear. When I was around three years old, my parents were looking for a new home for us to move into. We pulled up to one house in a local town that had been there for many, many years. When we pulled up, I saw an older man with a white t-shirt and overalls on, leaning against one of the posts of the house. He had no feet. When my parents got out to go look at the house, I told them I was not going near that old man on the porch. My parents looked at each other and asked me, What man? I told them what I saw. And they looked at me. And my older sister... And she said she didn't like the house either. Needless to say, we never went inside. It wasn't long after this, we lost my grandfather from my mother's side. He loved farming and loved me dearly. He was about to buy me a beekeeper's outfit so he could teach me how to keep bees because I loved going with him and my uncle to harvest honey. I was staying with a friend of mine as a sleepover and I had a very realistic dream that my grandfather came to me and told me he wasn't going to be here much longer. But don't worry. He'd be watching over me and my family. The next morning, my mom came and got me, and I saw that my grandmother was with her. Both looked awful and pale. When my mom told me that my grandfather had passed, I told her I knew. She and my grandmother looked at me and asked, Why did I say that? I told them my dream, and they just cried. I never understood why I had upset them so badly. Once I got older, I knew it wasn't because I'd upset them. It was that they were happy to know that he was going to be okay on the other side. When my dad got brain cancer, I was in my early 20s. We'd always been very open about the supernatural and even spoke of what he would do for us when he passed. 
to let us know he was okay. He always told me he would blink the lights for me. He passed away four years after this vow to me and my family. The night that he died, my sister, mother, and I were visiting him in the veteran's home that housed him. He had lost the ability to talk, but not to communicate. I was sitting with him when my sister said she was going to get a Coke from the vending machine. She stepped out, and I was the only one left with my dad. We were watching a boxing match on the TV, and he went from watching the TV to looking at the door. He looked at me in a surprised look and then back to the door. The look in his face was out of obvious shock and awe. I got up and walked over to the door thinking there was someone he saw that had passed through and he was waving, but there was no one. I looked back at dad and he was in full smile. He looked around me. It was as if I had already known. And I said, they're here, aren't they? You see them? He just smiled and said nothing. No nod to shake off the head, just a smile. I sighed and said, hang on, dad. My sister came back into the room and saw the smile on dad's face. She asked what he was smiling about, and I told her. They're here to collect him. I can't see them, but he does. She looked at Dad and said, Bullshit! No, he doesn't. Dad lowered his gaze to his lap, and my sister knew she was wrong. We kissed him goodbye and told him it was okay to go. We left so that he could pass on his own time. He died at 1 a.m. that morning. My phone rang once, and I answered it. Hi, Mom. Is he gone? She was crying and said yes. I left to go and give the news to my sister in person. It was a well-known vow for my whole family, and we had forgotten about it until the day of his wake. My mother, me, and my husband at the time, both of my children, my nephew and my sister, were looking at my father in the coffin. The kids wanted to know if he was in heaven, or was it even real? I explained to the kids that the body is like a peanut, the body we see is the shell. The soul is the peanut. When the peanut gets old, it loses the peanut inside, and it grows a new plant. The granddaddy was just beginning his new life on the other side. The kids felt my father's lifeless body and said it felt weird and nothing like him. As I was standing there, I said, I sure hope he remembers to blink my lights. No sooner than it rolled off my lips, the center light above my father blinked on and off three times. I looked around to see if someone was playing a joke on us and there was no one near a light fixture or a switch. Everyone standing at my dad saw the lights blink. My mom walked closer to me and put her hand on my arm and said, tell him to do it again. So this time, it was a little louder. Dad, if you hear us and you're okay, blink those lights again. And that's where we're going to pause the preview portion of this week's EPP bonus episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you'd like to hear the rest of this story and our other two, how did a parent rid their home of an evil entity that wanted to take over their child? And are curses real? Is there ever a way to rid yourself of a demonic curse? Those stories and more in this EPP bonus episode number 382 of Real Ghost Stories Online. To hear it, become an extra podcast person. Sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories to get access to all of our bonus materials. Binge away on it for literally months on end. Uh, there's so much content there. It's the world's largest audio archive of ghost stories, and it's all commercial free. Patreon.com slash real ghost stories or go to ghostpodcast.com.